Uh, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. My name is Chris Moffat, and we'd like to welcome you to our uh, presentation here today. And of course, as we've discussed, it's all about automating your quote to cash, making it faster with CPQ Sync by Syncom. So I will be your uh, event host today. I'm with uh, I'm the head of sales and marketing development at Purely CRM. And I'll just walk you through briefly the agenda, which is uh, after these introductions, we're going to talk about what CPQ is, what some of the key considerations are. We're going to talk about uh, solving some business issues associated with it, um, also across different lines of business and, and how CPQ Sync can help in those different areas. And then last but not least, we're going to actually get into the software and show you the system. So we will endeavor to get through this opening part as quickly as we can so that we can spend as much time in the system for you to look at. Our presenters, oh, sorry. Um, first thing I'm going to talk about is um, purely CRM, just as a uh, by way of introduction. So we're based in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, we're 100 365 for customer engagement or also known as CRM and that solution has four key components sales marketing customer service and field service and we implement the solution uh, we've migrated many organizations from on-premise to the cloud uh, provide integration services and so on and I'll point out that today the CPQ sync solution is in fact an an ISV solution which is fully embedded in Dynamics 365 for sales and uh, so that's what we'll be demonstrating today will be within Dynamics 365. So uh, here's our team that our list of presenters so I'd like to uh, introduce Rick McCutcheon he's a Microsoft MVP has been in the Microsoft Dynamics community for many many years and he, along with Robert Cavanaugh, who's a Canadian sales uh, manager for Syncom, will be uh, presenting next, followed by Sergey, who will be handling the demonstration of the software. So without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to both Rick and Robert to continue the conversation. Super. Thanks again. Thank uh, you, Chris. And Rick, uh, always great to see you on these things. And uh, thank you, Chris, uh, You know, for everybody listening today. Syncom and Purely, we've been strategic partners now for a couple of months, and uh, I, I know personally from building Syncom here in Canada, the momentum that we've been able to foster in such a short amount of time is totally reassuring, and I think just validates our position in the market, but also the opportunity to help uh, Microsoft's customers and the greater ecosystem do more in 2021. So Syncom is uh, about a 50 year old business, and for 25 years, we've been focused specifically in the CPQ space, and we had a very large complex on-prem solution where we garnered our experience and uh, or recently have ported that into the Microsoft Cloud and have a fully SaaS based offering. So you'll see there we are a strategic uh, gold managed Microsoft partner and we do keep good company. So across I think 60 countries we have a couple of thousand customers that we've been able to build our experience on and you can see there's lots of the predominant logos that everybody would would uh, tend to see on these NASCAR slides but we do play across a number of strategic verticals so industrial manufacturing the technology space HVAC specialty vehicles and professional and managed services just a few verticals where we've enjoyed success in the past and when we go through the conversation and, and explore the topic today around what is CPQ and how it can solve some critical business issues, I just wanted to level set and add some con uh, context around what you might hear one of us say is digital transformation, which is not an uncommon moniker to be thrown around the industry. But when we talk about that digitization, it really is about an automation of the sales process. So companies, uh, much like I'm sure many of you today are participating in, sell lots of different complex products and services. Historically, that has been cobbled together with manual processes, Excel spreadsheets, post-it notes, tribal knowledge, if you will. You can think of it as that desk-to-desk -desk process in your business 
that takes you from the origination of any type of prospect or customer relationship all the way through to you know shipping something and implementing. And so we see a propensity to solve issues around this automation, specifically with companies that have multiple types of product offerings, various levels of channels and dealer networks, uh, a multitude of different brands and subsidiaries across multiple geographies, and often in lots of different languages and currencies. So it really is to take the process of uh, managing a, a selling process or that buyer journey and simplifying it down into a, a future ready kind of cloud based uh, elegant solution, if you will, to ultimately save you money, make you more productive and uh, uh, put you in a, a better competitive position for the future. There are some important criteria, and I'm going to ask Rick to talk to a couple of things on this slide, but for sure, when you're talking to Syncom and our relationship with Purely CRM and, and automating uh, configure price quote, if you will, we are, and it's important to note, embedded directly and exclusively at the moment in Dynamics CRM. So we are not playing across any of the other major platform providers. We have uh, aligned ourselves with Microsoft and we are going to enjoy uh, working with that ecosystem for the next foreseeable future. And we have integrated with FNO as well. So as you go across the platform and your investments in Microsoft, you'll see that uh, it is our mind to innovation that will stay with you on that uh, ascent. So Rick, I know in uh, point two here, there are a couple other considerations that you might see more than somebody like me talking to other Microsoft ISVs and customers. Perhaps you could address some other criteria here that uh, customers want to have top of mind. So yeah, thanks, Robert. So you know, one of the, the points uh, that I thought we would cover here today is you know what a lot of customers are really kind of displacing out there. And I've got over 20 years experience of sales process consulting. And you know, many times we'll go into organizations who are looking for a CPQ and they've got something homegrown, right? And you know, that homegrown system could be anywhere from five to 25 years old and it sort of staggers along and sort of people put up with it. Um, also, you know, companies are moving to the cloud. They're trying to get everything into a cloud situation. And I think, you know, with the last year, um, the pandemic really proved that, you know, you need all your applications in the, in the cloud because sometimes there's just not people there to maintain the servers and uh, keep these old systems running. And then legacy CPQ products, um, again, uh, a lot of the organizations that I've worked with are running on CPQs that are too small um, for what they do, and they're more quoting systems. So when we look at this, and we're going to talk more about this in a few minutes, we run into sales productivity issues, especially around some of these old homegrown systems where people continuously to, you know, create workarounds to be able to do their quoting, which is terribly time consuming and it really affects the ability to you know, forecast properly and understand you know, what's in your business pipeline. And, and as I mentioned, you know, we, do, uh, we have seen the demand or the requirement to solve some of these issues across multiple verticals. So you can see here, historically, manufacturing has been a big adopter of CPU technology because if you think, you know, if you're selling an airplane or a tank or a building, if you will, there are there could be millions of parts or, or part numbers that you need to configure. And so manufacturing obviously lent itself very well to the onset of, of this uh, CPQ type initiatives within business today. However, for sure with our SaaS based offering, we have absolutely simplified a lot of that complexity and they're now looking at this in more of a horizontally focused way across the market meaning that it is far more applicable to more companies today specifically in the canadian market you you can go well into the mid market down into the smb space and find companies even with as few as 20 to 25 field people uh, needing a tool to simplify this uh, they can see significant returns even with a small investment and so i think that uh, while we have grown up in a couple of critical verticals important to note that regardless of the type of business you are today if you're trying to simplify the way your customers buy and ultimately advance those revenue and top line results then and you're a crm adopter specifically within microsoft cpq is a smart uh, thing to explore for sure and, and you'll see that there are some triggers that would uh, tip the hat to internal lines of business around seeing that they might have a problem that could be solved with CPQ. And, and I won't spend much time on this slide, but uh, 
you can see here for sure changes to leadership. So changes within management, changes are within uh, sales, within IT. You know, as new stakeholders come, they want to affect uh, new performance games, and that often comes with uh, automation, right? We need to take processes that maybe a, a legacy team would have been very comfortable with, and we need to update those relative to the new players on the team so that, again, we can continue to do more as we try to build our businesses out of such a challenging time like we've experienced over the past couple of years. So again, you can look at specific triggers that will start to poke their heads through a number of different lines of business. And perhaps, Rick, I could ask you, uh, and I, I can just touch on the top of the waves here, but ask you to maybe go into each of these lines of business and and maybe share with us some of the insights that you'd have around the challenges sales finance operations and it would have uh, when we're talking about you know helping them with the cpq offering you know we can thanks robert we can break this down into you know these four categories but really it's it's all about the data and the value of the data to your organization so um when i'm working with sales teams we're looking for faster quoting and, and faster sales but there's a big thing on accuracy because accuracy really slows us down. And as well as, you know, who's quoting what and how many times are we quoting it, competitive analysis of those types of things. So any data that we can enhance within the sales process begins to let us understand what we're doing today that we could do better, what we've done in the past that needs to be improved, and then what we want to be able to do in the future. So when we start to look at how efficient data can be used in, in, in this world, we can really start to understand what our sales teams are doing, what are they quoting, how are they configuring, and the time they're saving by using a CPQ product and get some real um, uplift in sales productivity. From finance, it's really efficiency around quoting, right? You know, what products are being included in these quotes? What are people actually um, you know, delivering as a quote to people, you know, we see on spreadsheets and as spreadsheets float around, do we have the right version of the spreadsheet? And we could have one group in one territory quoting something totally different on the same product because people are using old spreadsheets. So we run into this rework all the time for finance and again, being able to understand um, for reporting. Um, operations, you know, this is this is a big one for them because they got to understand better what's being quoted out there and what's going to be needed to be delivered by the organization. So they need more insight to that pipeline and they really want to get quote to cash running uh, properly. And again, relocation of personnel, but relocation of also resources um, that may be used on a project, resources to be able to ship things or you know resources to be able to um, support a customer so being able to understand that is a big component of crm and cpq working together and then we go back to information technology and you know it's not only about having data in one spot so we can report on it understand it use ai tools against it um, you know integrate it into our bots all that type of stuff but it's really the security of your data Right. If your data is moving around again on spreadsheets, not in a secure system, that's a problem for a lot of organizations. So really upping your CRM game, but adding a, a product like CPQ to it is going to really help your organization, you know, right through that entire sales to delivery process. I'd be curious as we just drop into the next slide, Rick, in your business and, and as a Microsoft MVP, what, uh, you know, do you get lots of interactions with customers that are just at the inception point adopting CRM? And if so, uh, you know, what is driving them to shift? Is it the pandemic? I mean, we all talk about the rush to digitization, but within each of these business units and relative to investing in Microsoft, how do you, how do you see it playing out over time? Are, are companies actually really rushing to kind of migrate everything? And, and if so, how, how are they prioritizing even how they're migrating and well, and investing in Microsoft. That, that could be that could be another hour session. We, we could talk right. about that over what happens over the last year. But we're, what we're seeing over the last couple of years is the customer and the, the channel partner want to, wanting to move more into a self-service model. So they want to be able to go on a website, look at a product, understand a product, do a configuration for a product, and possibly order that product without interacting with, with a sales organization. Or maybe that would trigger a call with a, a salesperson to help them through the, the final configuration. But 
what we're seeing now is clients really going into 60, 70, almost 80% of the buying process in most B2B sales. Um, just by you know consuming content, looking at information, and then they want to have control over, they don't want to want to click here, call for pricing. They want to under, understand your pricing. So the models of the way customers buying are changing rapidly. And even in the last year, they're, they're changing faster. As well, we're res, less reliant on what we call field salespeople because nobody was traveling or hasn't been traveling the last 12 months. And organizations are realizing, well, maybe we're just a little more efficient by moving our sales organization in-house and you know traveling when they need to travel. So changes in the way we sell and changes in the way our customer are buying are really saying, okay, we've got to get the CRM in shape because that data is probably worth hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to organizations. And now they're starting to see the value. On the other side of that, we're seeing more technology tools being developed to be able to understand our data, especially around AI. So if that data is not there, or even on the quoting process, if we don't understand what quotes we lost, then it's very difficult to understand how to quote better if we're only looking at the quotes we won. So a lot of systems, you know, here's the quote that I won, attach it to the CRM, that's what I, what I have. But we really want good data through the whole process to be able to get the ROI on it. So, you know, if we look at the buying and selling processes or the way they're changing and the way we need to look at data in the future, smart companies are investing heavily in this. And I'm going to say probably, you know, 50% of companies today have what I'll call a CRM and data strategy, but there's still about 50% out there that kind of wing it when it comes to sales. And I think we're going to see that gap close very, very quickly. Oh, that's great. And, and you know, in the next couple of slides, we do talk directly to what each line of business manager might be experiencing. And you you hit the, the CFO challenges and goals right on the head in terms of, you know, working to uh, streamline data collection and analysis so that, you know, at a C-suite level, they're making far better, more informed business decisions relative to the, the data that represents the source of truth in their business. Uh, and that all helps them mitigate risk, obviously, do better deals, increase profit, and that pleases the office of the CFO. So, Chris, if we drop into the next slide, I think we can move right through the lines of business. Sales and business development it is really the, the wheelhouse in terms of the effectiveness strategy or in pre increasing the uh, performance of an entire team. And so, again, we talk about the challenges and goals for a, a sales VP or a business development expert, and it really is about creating profitable revenue and advancing those deals and building a pipeline as quickly as possible. Often it is about accelerating uh, new products and innovations to market to, to, again, to get to those revenue uh, opportunities faster to ultimately improve their competitive point of differentiation. And then in turning uh, internally, inter uh, improving processes to streamline once these orders take place, what happens in the back end to make sure that all of the various departments, be it sales, IT, engineering, product management, they're aligned when these orders are being processed and coming in such that it is done in an efficient, cost-effective manner and it's not creating unnecessary burden for other lines of business like the technology department, which for sure is used to what we used to call it as toolkit-itis, but you know, IT folks are having to manage a, a litany of different systems. And I think the way to the future, as far as I can see, is really to get a better handle on simplification of those systems so you can start to break down those silos of disparate data, get a, a closer to an accurate picture of what's happening in real time in the business. And, and you know, like you see in this slide, it really transcends through sales right into operations. Uh, perhaps, Rick, you could talk about uh, you know, how you view CPQ benefiting somebody within the operations department, because it really is, you know, you talk about digital transformation a lot in your business, I know. And this is really what it's all about for sales ops people, is it not? It's about how can we, and you actually alluded to it in a previous slide, right? Is what, how is sales changing and how are operations, you know, what are they looking for to help uh, empower their reps and their field teams to uh, live with that change? Well, we're seeing organizations really invest in the sales process from an operations perspective as well. 
So we're seeing um, more, more, or more and more organizations have people in there who are the CRM managers or the sales process manager within an organization, understanding how do we deliver this in a repeatable fashion and less of a sort of what we used to call a cowboy type organization where everybody kind of works as an individual, does their own thing, and we've got high performers and we've got a lot of mid and lower performers. So organizations are starting to look at what do we do to win? How does it help us win better? And what can we do from a process to improve it? Also, you know, operations want to be aligned with sales on what's closing, right? They really need to understand what products are being offered up to our prospects, to our customers, and when are they going to close so I can have the resources available for delivery, shipping, accounting, all the things that I need to be able to to, to put things together. So, you know, they don't like spikes in their business that they don't see coming. And I think that CRM and CPQ together can really eliminate that. It, you know, it's interesting as we go into the next slide in IT, I'm curious, you know, have things changed such, a, such as this deck's got a gap? How often would you be interacting with the chief revenue officer? And have we missed that line of business? Because it is tied directly to a number of these things we're talking about today. Yeah, so we're seeing, you know, between seven or eight people um, in management involved in these decision making processes, right? So it's not, you know, at one point we'd see really IT, you know, 15 years ago, we'd see IT kind of making the decision for everybody yeah. on what systems they want to use. But I think, you know, our uh, general population is more computer literate now and information's at everybody's fingertips. So they can go out, review products, watch videos on products, look at reviews on products. So we're getting more and more people involved in that sort of buying process. And really the IT department becomes the, I'm gonna say the coach in the background saying, okay, did we go out and look at all the possibilities? Did we go out and look at the major players? How secure? Uh, what's the support like? What are the, what's the pricing like? So we're really seeing this as a, a group purchase. So, you know, we got to keep keep that in mind when we're we're building the process through an organization. Yeah, no, you're right. And building a business case to justify a, an expenditure like this as well, right? You need to include all those key stakeholders because everybody stands to to benefit in some capacity. Well, you know, if they don't have a CPQ today, I, I wouldn't build a business case on how can they afford one. I'd build a business case on how much money they're losing without one. That's right. Yeah. No, I, I mean, we see it uh, consistently. I've, I've got some great examples of discovery calls I've had, but, uh, you know, there are a lot of legacy based manual systems out there still today, despite all the automation that has been uh, talked about for the last couple of years in the market. So, uh, Chris, happy to move on to the next slide. I think we're getting close to uh, having Sergey walk us through uh, a day in the life of what a field representative would actually interact with in the system. Uh, so, Sergey, we're going to hand things over to you and perhaps you and Rick can give people an appreciation for what the tool looks like and how it stands to benefit them from a usability perspective. Awesome. Thank you. That's why I get really excited. There's a lot of uh, changes in the evolution of the CPQ world. Quote the cache. Let me go ahead and take over my screen here one second. Go ahead and display this out. Hopefully everybody can see my dashboard. What I'm going to be sharing here is primarily our dynamics landings page here. Hopefully everybody can see that and I go ahead and dive into it. So I'll play the role as um, you know, someone in a day in the life is leveraging, you know, an, an embedded solution such as CPQ sync. Um, looking at some of those guided sales uh, enablement features. Now, remember, CPQ Sync is, uh, you know, from Syncom as a uh, an ISV uh, plugin through the Dynamics experience delivered through Azure. So we're an independent software vendor, and it means we can produce applications seamlessly behind the scenes and, and create a very single pane of glass experience. So as you can see, I'm looking at my dashboard. I'm a salesperson. I'm trying to figure out what I can close. It's, uh, you know, toward the end of the month, we got to get some deals, get some money on the pipeline, some books. Um, so I'm going to come over and look at my, my quotes that are accumulating here, and I'll, I'll start with one in particular. It's a hot customer I've been working with. So everything so far is dynamics, right? And, and right at the top, you're going to start seeing some uh, enablement functions from CPQ Sync start to make an appearance. Right at the top here, you see configure quote and generate proposal. Both are equal, equally important components that make up uh, the kind of a, a speed, efficiency, and accuracy of the entire advanced kind of coding experience 
um, from A to Z. I'll start with a con configure quote here. We'll go ahead and dive right into it. The first item that's going to pop out, and I'll make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see, and I can also maximize the screen. Remember, this is through a traditional like uh, Microsoft workload. So this is uh, responsive across many devices, tablets or phones, whatever the workforce is, is using this for. So I can expand this out. I have a catalog of products and services that I can see here. Now my sandbox that I'm demonstrating today is basically gonna showcase, um, you know, can highly configurable manufactured items or products. And then there's also a, a play for, you know, working to develop, um, configurations for solutions and services or a combination of which, you know, CPQ Sync really is a Swiss Army knife to kind of enable that functionality. But I'll start with the manufacturer item to kind of give you a, a spin of what that experience would look like. In diving right in, the first thing that happens is we're enabling the sales population to have a, a really guided sales experience and be very consistent. Across any sales environment, it's imperative that the salesperson is asking appropriate questions and understanding what the use is for that's going to translate to a very high value and making sure that the transaction is going to be you know beneficial across the board so if i ask the customer what they're using it for and they come back and say machine shop what we have here is a hide reveal rule that is exposed now and showcasing only products that fit the scenario for a machine shop further to that we've gone and identified that the dg series compressor is best to find uh, you know kind of the top pick for the scenario and all up so the sales population then becomes very consistent they're really on the rails they, they don't have an opportunity to go sideways or pick products that aren't compatible this keeps everything very consistent and really increases that customer satisfaction and we're also staying within the same pane of glass so i'll go ahead and add that to the, the order here and we'll carry on again our card line item plays out um, this may help folks on tablets. I like to also switch it back to our kind of a, a cart view, like an e-commerce. And from here, I could quickly take this. Now let's go up to the top. I'll minimize this uh, expanded display, and I could go to my generic proposal, and I could send right now a budgetary estimate to the customer that I'm working with. It would pull the customer name and contact information and generate a thank you letter and basically a line item pricing. But today I want to do more. I want to go ahead and configure the, this product because that's what it's all about, making sure this is very specific to what the customer's needs are. I'll skip through some of the Boolean items here that are just kind of, you know, touch, feel, capacity. Those are pretty standard items. Nothing too much of a sizzle there. But where it starts getting interesting is, is items around extended warranty, right? So if I pitch in, and present the warranty, which I should as a salesperson, I, I have to kind of land on the right package that's going to fit. So we start, we're starting out with a bronze package, but if I'm asking and digging and diving deeper into the customer's world and find out they have a greater use case, I entered into our syntax, a simple formula dip rule populates and hit, triggers a tiered selection for warranty gold package. So this right here stopped me from reaching out to tribal knowledge leader. You know, I could have Bill over in headquarters, just a warranty specialist. He's been with the company for 15 years. He knows everything about warranty. I didn't have to call Bill. I got it all figured out. I'm in the deal. I'm still moving forward. And the customers look at me like I'm the expert with all the answers. So that helps me in that particular scenario. And you can use that for a lot of different functions, not just a quote unquote warranty item. The next one I like a lot as well. This really keeps the opportunities on the rails and make sure they don't you don't start sending through to production incompatible builds. So let's say I'm working with a customer and they are very adamant that in the past they've only purchased single phase 50 hertz uh, motors. And I could say, you know, Mr. Customer, I don't think that's uh, that's real. You know, I'm not sure if that's right. And I, and I could be a, a younger salesperson and maybe a little concerned about challenging the viewpoints of an adamant customer. But with CPQ Sync, um, if I go ahead and select those incompatible configurations, I'll get a policy uh, tip. This is my constraint rule. That's going to make sure that I only pick compatible items throughout the configuration to keep the build on track. So this is going to stop me from building and configuring in incompatible options. And I can make the recommendation also educate the customer why this is not a good fit. A little note pops up. I have to correct it to proceed so I can't send it back to the production without fixing this. And I can apply it and get it back on track. So we talked about three different rules at this point. Now remember, you can go back and you can compile these. This is really where the Swiss Army knife comes together and you can layer these rules together to get extremely creative on how you want to control the sales experience, but also maximize the right output at the end. I'm going to skip past some of these other ones. You still can get very specific about the product. 
pretty standard items. The last one here is around relationship rules. This one's great. You know, from time to time, I, I try to order parts for my car, you know, and do some side work. And and sometimes they come through and, you know, but this one experience, I ordered some, some parts and carved out some time on a Sunday afternoon to do some work. And the parts finally came. Uh, I was I was really convinced that they were going to all work. Everything was going to be smooth sailing. It turns out they were the wrong parts. So I, my afternoon's blown. The work never got done. I got to facilitate re, uh, return, and I've really lost faith in this company that I ordered the parts from. So with CPQ Sync, I can look at all the accessory items, and everything that's presented here only fits the DG series compressor. So I can't go sideways. These are absolutely going to fit. I don't have an option to even slide in let's say an M series compressor or a T series, you know, for some other product, these are only going to fit the DG series. And further to that, this is not me working on my car on the weekend. This is an enterprise application. They could have 20 or 30 of these units across the country. And if I would send out either wrong hose and they end up failing, it could be catastrophic. It could be a loss of revenue, it could jeopardize the, the buyer's uh, position in the organization. I'm probably going to get in trouble for selling the wrong items, but you know, so in any case, the, the relationship rules that I'm able to create here around this functionality are just uh, really you know, critical to making sure that any of those accessory items that go out the door are going to fit uh, specifically every time. And I just so, want to uh, add, Sergey, sure. that, you know, some of the important pieces of this is that um, Syncom's built this product and it's embedded right into Dynamics. So it runs on the um, Dataverse engine which is the same database as the uh, Dynamics CE. So if you're integrating your uh, CRM slash CE back to your ERP system like FNO or, or Business Central or even non-Microsoft products, you just need to sync back the CRM and all this data will go with it, right? It's all in the same tables. And another important piece here too is it's built into all the workflows of the product. So if Sergey went in there and picked something and he says, I really need this product and I need it at this delivery date, well, there could be rules built in the system that automatically that gets queued up to somebody who's gonna have to, okay, we can get it delivered by, by that date. So there's lots of background configuration we can do because this CPQ product is actually embedded right into the uh, into dynamics. Yeah, those are extra excellent points. Um, you know, that you can really pair and make those uh, rules to fit a wide range of scenarios all deeply embedded here. Uh, I can I can spot check my build, you know, so I might build the materials at any time. I can go through the line item of all the items that went into my build. And when I'm ready, I can save this out and prepare the full pricing out to the customer. So I'm back to my top level level uh, header for my pricing. And we can even add additional functionality here. In our example today, I, I built out a discount percentage. So the scenario here is, let's say the customers give me a really hard time and said, Sergey, I love the compressor, but I can only do it at 15% discount. You know, and I can just say, hey, Mr. Customer, I'm not the I'm not the boss, but I can send it into you know our management and see if we can get an approval. We we certainly don't want to lose your business. So I can enter in my my discounts here for my side, and it kind of equates to what the the overall discounts are. The nice thing about that, though, it actually breaks down to triggering our workflows. So once it hits a review process, this is standard dynamics features. Now we can introduce a management person to kind of come in or somebody else to kind of approve and make sure that the margins are uh, held and consistent. Or if you need to get a manager approval just to win that opportunity, you certainly can. So it kind of helps leverage some of the baked in dynamics feature, <coughs> features. So the other part which is really cool, is the, is the document generation. So as I've gone through my configuration, all the different selections I made equate to a change within the document set. This happens in real time, and I can produce those on the fly. So the first one I want to show you is I mentioned the, bu the budgetary estimate. That's a very clean and easy document set that if I want to send out to easy light conversation, I didn't have to a lot of do a lot of work to produce it. And that's what basically what this one will look like. As you can see, I have a letter. Thank you for purchasing. Come back to me for more items. I got my company logo, watermarks, and everything else. Uh, and then the line item pricing with the items that I selected. Very quick and easy. The next one, because we went through a full configuration, and I've done these in the past for different organizations with professional services. And a lot of this is very ad hoc. You have to customize your own Word documents, or if you do get a template, <coughs> you still have to go through and right size it. It's painstaking and also leaves a lot of room for error. There's really nothing that can be 
you know, inappropriate ad added to these documents. These are really tight. Pulls directly from Dynamics. If that information is correct, that's exactly what you're going to see. We have our thank you letter, our pricing. Remember, we talked about the air hose. And then we also have the warranty, right? So we've talked about a warranty and the warranty extends for the air hose. This is all based on the custom selections that we did through the configuration process. And then we have other boilerplate languages. Just for an example, like support services. How do you reach out? What do you need to be prepared for that experience? And other items such as terms and conditions. But we can actually match this to basically any document set that's it's currently in production. And, and to actually create this is built around basically the standards of Microsoft Word. It's very, very simple to do so. But I, I did want to show one other piece here. And, and uh, so what we, we found that a lot of folks also want to really accelerate the sales cycle. Um, I think we we're talking earlier about, you know, folks that are kind of doing a lot more shopping out on the web and they're searching for different products. So let's say that the opportunity comes in from another perspective and you're doing like a big search looking for these air compressors and you come across Acme again. And so from the customer perspective, you know, I can I can start my own journey without any interruption from a salesperson. And if I'm the buyer, I may be the source of tribal knowledge. I might already have a wealth of information and I don't want to be slowed down by doing my research by, you know, a salesperson that's just trying to close a deal. All the speeds and feeds and uh, components, the detail specs for the product is all presented to me but I can take it further and start configuring my own product. So this is all customer facing. This is from Acme's website and now our CPQ sync functionality is being extended out to the customer on their own, independent of any salespeople. And we can go through some of the same configuration options, color, some of the, the physical dimensions, but this is where it gets really cool. So we can also push those, those constraints out to the to the end customer. So for example, that motor frequency, if they're on their own, we can make sure that they also get a policy tip indicating that, you know, that's not something that you can actually build and put in production. They'll have to fix it before they put it on through and request the sales to fulfill the order. And they can expand out any of those selections, continue on to configure the, the product to the exact specifications. They'll even get an opportunity to talk about the warranty. If they self-evaluate that they want the warranty services, they can go in and make that selection. And they also can take a, take advantage of that formula rule that hits that tiered response. So it can flip it from you know, the bronze package to gold and keep them moving forward. Now this does accelerate the sales process. You know, basically this customer is really taking trust within Acme. They've gone through the build very, uh, very, very detailed, takes some time to do so. And when they get to a certain point, they can request kind of like, uh, a reach out to the sales team to, to fulfill the order. Unfortunately, this isn't a, a complete uh, e-commerce you know, solution where you can actually uh, finalize the purchase at this moment. The idea is really pass through to sales, a very warm opportunity that they can close and make sure that everything else is correct. So anytime they can go ahead and punch in their information to reach out to for sales ex ex uh, assistance to finalize the opportunity. And this all happens in real time and you'll see this hit my, my lead queue. So here it comes. This gentleman named Sergey is looking for an air compressor. Send in the request. Let's jump back to our Acme salesperson. Looking at our quotes and see what we have as far as a new order that came in. Let me search this by uh, newest to oldest and see what happens. Oh, well, here we go. A lead from the website just came in. That's great. It's the end of the month. I need another deal. Let's see what we have. And the only piece I want to really show you here is these come through a little bit different. And like I said, it's fully configured. So if I go in and look at the cart item, right, that the customer created, first thing I'm going to do is just make sure all the pricing is correct. Nothing changed from when they entered it and I'm working on it. But if I look at the configuration, I'm sorry for going through that real fast, you will see that the items are basically boxed in. So you, the guided sales experience is a little bit accelerated. And basically, you're just going through the line items as a salesperson to make sure it's the right purchase and help the customer tighten that up. So pretty exciting to see that out there. It's been a lot of demand and interest for different uh, verticals to kind of see that accelerated process. But I'll pause it there and open up to any questions. Anybody else want to expand upon that or any questions re regarding that latest uh, winter release? And you, and you know, Sergey, when you were you were showing this, it's it's really what the customers want in the buying process, but it becomes a competitive disadvantage if you don't have these tools for the customer. If I can go somewhere else and do that level of shopping and actually, you know, expose myself here, it's me looking at this and giving my name, 
then my sales rep is out of the process and the and, and the competitors reps are are in the process doing you know their magic to convince the customer to to move across so you know if you're selling some kind of technology you want to be seen as sort of, of a modern company um dealing with the modern buyer so this is this is really crucial now this web self-service and in the, in the b2b buying process i agree yeah we've definitely seen a resounding interest in this uh, and that's so why we built it we want to kind of uh, get ahead of the market and enable uh you know our, our customers to be there for their, their downstream clients so we have no uh questions yet from the audience sergey so you can keep moving okay I'll turn it back over. The last thing I want to say is just, you know, again, this is an embedded application, uh, CPQ Sync. You find it in your interface here and, and uh, you can have it hydrated to your tenant with all the functionality, um, but it's really exciting. There's a lot more to be to be done with this. Really is a Swiss Army knife of your quote to cash experience, but thanks for letting me share uh, kind of hands-on look at what CPQ Sync can do. Thanks, Sergey, that was great. And here's slides okay. back up. My slides back up. That's great. So what do we do next is the question. And um, well, I'm sure you're wondering, well, is this worth it for me or for my, the, or my organization? Uh, so fortunately, we have a ROI analysis solution tool that we can uh, leverage here and uh, to help provide that empirical proof, if you will. Um, so we run you through a series of questions. We're going to look at things like uh, errors, um, reduction, how we can reduce cost to generate quotes um, in processing the orders and the overall efficiency and so on. So we'll look at that and we'll um, use this uh, ROI tool uh, to help you come up with your or develop your business case uh, for CPQ. Um, and if this is something that is of interest to you, I encourage you to reach out to me. Uh, you can reach me at uh, cmoffitt at purelycrm.com. And, and, or if you have any questions about the information that you saw today, we'd like to take a deeper dive into CPQ Sync, by all means, please uh, contact me. So we wanna thank you again for attending this webinar and presentation. Thanks to our presenters, Robert, Rick, and Sergey. Great job. And we look forward again to seeing you soon. Bye for now. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Bye Chris. for now. Take care, guys. Thank you, Rick. Thanks.